Right, so here's my first go at an unboxing video. And uh, this is the SQ11 Mini DV camera. Um, and well, you'll see what I want it for later. Um, it's just, I have opened this already, even though I look incompetent. And inside you get a little tray. And there's the camera. And underneath the tray, you've got a couple of extra bits. Cable for charging and transferring data and these two plastic things. This, and I won't show you because it's a pain to get off, but these little hooks, they clip onto the camera. I'll just show you in, uh, come on out. Uh, these little slots just here. And uh, then you can clip that onto here to make it like a, a camera mounty sort of thing. But that's, I'm not interested in. But the camera, I am very much interested in. And you can see how small it is. There's my thumb. Um, so it's very, very small. It uh, claims to do 1080p full HD, although I think it'd be fair to describe it as potato quality. And there's not really much else to see. That side blank. It's got like a colourful sticker going all the way around it. Uh, two buttons on the top, an M button and an on-off button. And at the side... Uh, is an SD card I've put in, that's my SD card, and that's where your USB cable goes. Um, originally this did come in a little plastic uh, thing, so it was a bit more protected, and there are also some very impressive instructions, which I will show you next. I bought this from Wish.com, uh, which you may or may not be familiar with, um, and basically it's stuff direct from China. And imagine my horror when I only saw these two buttons on the top there, and... Uh, this, this set of instructions, all written in actual Chinese, and it, and it goes on for, let me just uh, give you a full scan through there, pages, and I went, oh my goodness. Fortunately, on the back, it is then written in what my friends and I call Chinglish. Not exactly English, but you know, it's a good, good a go. Um, so for example, to charge it, it says, the machine built-in rechargeable lithium battery, first time using this machine, please charge can be charged by the following way. Uh, it doesn't exactly make sense, but you get enough to get the drift of it. Fortunately, I found a video online to tell me how to actually use the camera parts because I just couldn't make head nor tails of it. So um, next up, we'll see what I'm gonna do with the camera. So I was trying to think about uh, what to mount this camera to uh, and a bogey carriage would mean that it's not really looking down the track as it were. So I thought, I've got an old wagon. That might fit in it quite nicely. It need some sort of padding just to keep it there. Um, but if you look at the front, the lens is actually hidden. So I'm gonna to need to make a cut in uh, this part of the wagon and then hopefully that'll work. Um, so while I go and do that, I'll look for some padding for this as well. So this is what I've come up with then. Uh, come around to the front, you'll see I've cut a relatively neat hole out of the planks. I'm no modelling expert as we know. Um, and then I've just wedged it with this, this piece of dowling just here, which just pops out. Because the camera does need to come out so I can access the SD card and uh, the USB connector. But it all slots back in very easily. And uh, there you go. And um, this is a shot of what I've got at this point from the little mini camera. So, as you saw, uh, in the dark it's not particularly good quality, but we'll have a second go, this time with the door open. And I've just put my hand in front of the camera. Sorry about that, everyone. Um. really pleased with the angle there it's just off center like I imagine a train driver of a EMU would be um, but I thought it just it, it I mean it is level but you can't see much of the track so what I've done is I've just put in this um, little bit of cardboard at the bottom here uh, just to sort of give it a bit more of an angle there and uh, well we'll see what this one now looks like brief intermission um, 
As previously discussed, my layout is far from a showpiece. It's more of a playset at the moment. But, um, well, I, I either live in an earthquake area or my son's friend took a bit of a slip and took half of the station with him. I think I'll be doing some rebuilding before we uh, have the final test of the new train. So there we have it. My finished driver's eye view camera truck with the little camera obviously on the truck. Uh, it does need some power to move it around the layout so I thought uh, for its maiden voyage I get my little class 08 Backman shunter to come and do uh, shunting duties. Hopefully it will couple up properly and uh, it can go off to where it needs to go for the start of the filming. Here we are ready then for our first driver's eye tour of the Buckhampton Town, well, playset really, rather than model railway. Um, we're sat here in the bay siding here at Buckhampton Town, all ready to set off. I think we're uh, we're given the right away. There we go. Could have been a more smooth start. Off in the distance, you can see uh, various items of rolling stock at the sidings by the turntable and the long siding in the background. Now we're just coming around the back of uh, Buckhampton Village here. Um, we're now approaching the main line. No signals here, but uh, I guess we're using uh, the force to know something must be coming up the main line uh, as we uh, ignore the giant hand that's just making all these changes. What are we going to see? Waiting at signals is so annoying. There you go, a splash of colour as a class 159 southwestern turbo. City of Exeter passes by. Maybe we'll uh, get the signal again. Giant hands there, a bit of a clue that I think we're going to be uh, allowed to set off. Here we go. Across the uh, level crossing of no gates, a bit dangerous as we do some wrong line working. Now we switch back over to the right lines. Okay, we're now coming through the uh, fake tunnel into uh, Buckhampton Town. Coming down the line bet uh, before us, you can see a Class 159 and a non-stopper. Definitely a different one, of course. And I think we're just going to stop here by the Art Deco Network South East station. Now technically that signal there says we can't go, but I reckon it's just a museum piece. So we're, we'll make a, a way off. There's that suspicious 159 again. Heading through the single tunnel here. My son insists we have it on the layout. You can see in the distance uh, various lotions and potions for servicing and blocks of wood for holding up a camera while filming. That was the um, footbridge of danger there, missing several uh, handrails. And uh, we're crossing that level crossing once again. So um, that must be a complete tour of our little model railway. I guess all that's left is to make our far, uh, final stop in Buckhampton Town. There we go. Lovely. So I thought we'd... Uh... Just have a quick tour of the layout in the other direction. As you can see, we're sat here overlooking the turntable. Uh, my son has joined us. You might hear him in the background. And you'll notice a change of rolling stock on the other line. So, uh, oh, I've got to get those start and finishes better. So, uh, we've just backed off using a banksman onto the main running line. And I uh, have a suspicion there'll be no problems with signals this time. There's that obscure piece of rolling stock I told you about as we pass the ancient signal box and station. The footbridge of danger that's got parts that need fixing. We come past the single tunnel and uh, that gives you a good look down through Buckhampton Town Station I think this time. And uh, we'll come back round and hopefully, unless uh, my son trips us up, we will end up in the bay platform where we started. And we go back onto the branch okay. round the back of the village okay. and hopefully we make it nice and gently up to the buffers there we go well i hope you enjoyed this little video about uh, my new driver's eye view camera truck and uh till the next time we meet 
travel safely. Daddy.